Good. Wait, wait, don't press the button. Okay, I'm holding in now. Press the button. Are you riveted? You did it! First riveted. That was the first riveted. Okay, I'm going back inside. Okay, as I'm doing my rudder vertical stabilizer video for YouTube, I'm realizing I don't have a lot of video for uh, for my rudder, or actually, I don't think I have any video for my vertic or vertical stabilizer. So here's the rudder as it was built. Um, I ended up having issues from the beginning when I was uh, originally doing my rudder. I did the spar fairly easily, put did the hinges. Um, Use stainless steel rivets for the hinges and then um, when I got to the skin I had uh, ribs riveted on the, the spar and then I tried to line them up to the skin and they weren't lining up. I went into different forums, uh, Rand's Clan, Vans RV Air Force Forum or Vans Air Force Forum and they were talking about either a bend that was off center for the trailing edge, so you ended up with uh, your holes not lined up because the bend wasn't in the correct place where the holes are drilled with the CNC machine and then it's bent afterwards. Or there's uh, some other issue going on. So I was trying to flatten the trailing edge because there's one, what I ended up getting, and I'll show a video of that, is I got a uh, pillowing on one side. If I put a straight edge across and then it kind of concaved in, sunk in on the other side. So what happened was it was pulling and making it pillowing up and the other side when it was, it pulled and it sunk it in. So uh, they were gonna send me ribs that were drilled only on one side. So what basically I would rivet the ribs on this side, match drill them on the other side of the skin. Um, they sent me the wrong ribs the first time, but that was no big deal. I got the, the right ribs eventually, which were not drilled at all, which actually worked out the best. So I uh, riveted them. I took out the rivets with, uh, you punch the center mandrel, and then you, these are aluminum rivets. They're really easy. You take whatever hole size is number 30. You take a number 30 drill bit, pop out the head as you drill down that perfectly centered hole, and then you... Uh, this head pops off, the rivet comes out real easy, doesn't mess up the hole. So I put the undrilled ribs on these three stations. I didn't change this rib. This rib wasn't too bad with my original and I had already riveted on a, uh, there's a plate up above here that you rivet on. You can see the rivets there. So having undrilled ribs made it easier because what I basically did is I had the previously uh, drilled ribs that were off about a half a hole and I, um, I put the, those ribs on the skin and I just basically marked, well, I marked the new ribs with the holes from the, from the bad ribs. And so when I was able to see, as I see a half a hole, a half a mark, you could, you could do a center line too, but what I ended up doing is on the rib, I just marked a black mark with a Sharpie and I could see through. And so I lined it and it's uh, pretty easy to line the top one you got access these two in the center are harder to align. So what I did is I took one of these magnetic uh, telescoping poles. They, you put magnets to kind of grab things in hard places. Obviously aluminum is not magnetic. I was able to just fish it up in there. And the ribs don't go all the way to the trailing edge. So I fished it up in there and I was able to maneuver those ribs, you know, back and forth here because they were already riveted to the spar back and forth, get the holes drilled correctly, make sure you're using a flat bench. That was part of my issue probably, is um, my plywood bench is a little bit uh, warped. So I had to have two by fours that this thing stood on that two by fours were uh, shimmed level and then use little weights. And then the front leading edge, they already had rolled one of the edges and I kind of got confused because I wasn't sure if the rolled edge was supposed to be on the underneath side or on the top side. Obviously, I put on the top side. That works out well. It was pretty aggressive rolled edge. And the reason I got confused is I did an RV8 tail and their edge, they have a 90 degree on one of the edges. And that 
90 degree edge goes on the bottom side. So when I saw this kind of aggressively rolled edge, I didn't know if that was similar to what RVs had or not. And then uh, one change I did is I had an extra stainless steel because they had the new hinge, longer rivets for the hinge, but I got uh, the short rivets also. So I ended up using a stainless steel rivet instead of aluminum rivet right there. And one thing I would do is before you rivet your, um, your hinges on, to the to the spar definitely get these holes aligned here there's three bolt holes so um, I would I would get those on and aligned because what I couldn't do is I couldn't lie lie this face down flat to match drill through here because these holes are only eighth inch and you got to drill them up to uh, three sixteenths yeah three sixteenths and um, so that kind of made it a little bit more difficult, but definitely get those holes matched. I wasn't sure how this front hole was attached. There's like five washers on that thing. So make sure you put all the washers in it. It keeps this gap right here. There's a gap for the, for the tail end of these rivets to kind of clear. So that's why that gap's there. On the top one, they don't have the metal tubing. There's a top bolt up in here. It's hard to see without the light. But anyway, so you gotta put a bunch of washers on that to level that out. Um, I can see there's a little bit of pillowing right there already, pillowing. So uh, I'm pretty satisfied with the second, um, second, I guess, try at my uh, rudder. Definitely want to mention Rands has corrected the rudder rib issue and they're giving you ribs that are only drilled on one side right now. Okay, the spar has been match drilled. The special ribs with no drilled uh, holes to the skin have been all match drilled. Now we take it apart, deburr everything. And then uh, we'll rivet it up and see what happens. I don't expect any problems. Pretty confident it's going to be uh, straight as an arrow. This particular section of my workbench is fairly flat, so I used it to uh, rivet the rudder. So this is after I match drilled the undrilled ribs to the skin, made sure everything was flat. So basically you just uh, weigh it down those little black things are sandbags from a weight vest. They're about a pound a piece, so I used a lot of them. So whole, weighing the skin down on the ribs and just uh, placing rivets in and pulling rivets, uh, nothing real technical, fairly straightforward, and ended up with a, a straight rudder. Very satisfied with the results. I'm glad I took the time to get ribs that were not drilled and make sure everything was done nice and flat. Every once in a while I pick up that drill with the reamer on it. Uh, maybe the hole wasn't quite matched up. 
uh, maybe had a little bit of a something on it that wasn't allowing the rivet to fit in so I'd just take that drill with that uh, reamer just kind of clean it up a little bit so the rivet fits in nice and nice and smooth okay here I am up drilling the 332nd leading edge holes to uh, number 30 and then uh, riveting with the uh, 1 8 inch rivets so as I remove those silver clecos, I drill out with the reamer nice and smooth, put the rivets in, and then uh, rivet. And that's about it. Uh, rudder is done. I use a uh, big Cherry Max riveter there. The nose is kind of thick on that, so I don't use it very often. Get that stainless steel rivet set, and it's all done. So there's uh, the first part, and we are uh, happily on our way to building a Rand's S21.